in our minds And the things that we are searching for They're sure
God is dead And there's others who will laugh and mock At the words my Jesus said They say that our emotions are just a cheap thrill But I'm I'm mean, glad you're saved. Amen. Well, some of you are. Some of you are having a rough time this morning. God bless you. Uh, amen. I just thank you that you put forth that effort to be in the Lord's house today. Thank you, brother. Um, everybody smile. Everybody smile. We'll all feel better. Praise the Lord. Well, thank God for God's house. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the Sunday school hour. We appreciate the Sunday school hour this morning. Yeah, yes, and we want to encourage you to come and be with us in Sunday school. Amen. Um, I think we, uh, right, right up here is a seat, I think, my brother. Amen, right here. We're, we're getting to have a good problem, aren't we? Amen. Thank the Lord for that, and... Uh, um, well, I love a good, uh, good crowded house. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Um, but anyway, let's just worship the Lord. Won't say Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers. How many mothers we have? Raise your hand. All of our mothers. Amen. Thank you. Amen for being in God's house. And I want to say it's good to have my mom with me this morning. I'm a little partial. You would be too if you got your mom. Amen. There's, there's many that sitting in this congregation this morning would just like to talk to their mother one more time. Amen. Or maybe hear their mother pray one more time. But anyway, thank you uh, for being in the Lord's house. Let me make these announcements right quickly. We welcome our visitors, amen, to the house of the Lord today. Thank you for being here and just make yourself at home. Uh, if, you, if it's your first time visitor, uh, we just an old fashioned church, amen. Loves the Lord, and uh, we're just going to worship Him today, all right? Amen. And that's what we want you to do is worship. You don't have to wait to the end of the service to if if God speaks to your heart and you need to pray. This altar's open and always open. Uh, I tell you, if if you're saved, you have to you had to come to exactly the same way I had to come. Amen, and that's to an altar of repentance. Now, it might not have to be actual, this altar. I'm glad God can hear us where we sit. Amen. Amen. But he said, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be also be ashamed of you before my Father, which is in heaven. I wouldn't, listen, sometimes it just takes, I promise if you'll take one step, God will take the rest for you. Amen, if you'll just step out on faith. I'm glad I know that I'm saved. And we make these announcements. Uh, um, Jesus is coming. Does anybody know when? Could be today. Hallelujah. Uh, you said nobody knows. There ain't but one. His name's Jesus. Amen. Or Jesus don't even know. God knows. But Jesus is just waiting on God the Father. Amen for the answer. And somebody tries to predict this stuff. Let me tell you something. You can't predict it. Amen. All I know is he's coming. My pastor said he preached for 40 some years. Jesus is coming soon. And guess what? He said he's still coming soon. It may be today. Friend, you look around us. Amen. I'm hoping, pray that your heart is ready. Uh, remember tonight service. Amen. We won't cancel the evening service. We'll be back here tonight. We got Brother Levi Worley. Amen. From down at the Springwood, the Free Will Baptist Church will be doing the preaching. He's come up for uh, ordination and our treasury board there at the association. And uh, I thank I thank God for every uh, open door that God gave me when I professed the call to preach at the Bethel Free Will Baptist Church many years ago, back in 1988. I'll never forget God uh, began to open up the doors, and I appreciate these men of God that opened up their pulpit. I'm just saying that personally, and I'm going to tell you, we these boys that are announcing the call, uh, amen, the calling of God to preach to God, we need to give them an opportunity. All God's people say it? To stand and to preach. You say, well, they're young. I was young too, amen. But I'm going to tell you, it took prayer. It took perseverance. It took uh, keeping on your knees before God. Because I'm going to tell you, the devil will do anything he can to keep you out behind the pulpit. 
Amen. The pulpit. So remember that tonight at 6 o'clock. So everybody be back in the Lord's house. Do I have an announcement for this week? Thank you for the association. I'm telling you, our church done a, uh, listen, I'm bragging on the Lord through you. Done a wonderful job yesterday uh, hosting this meeting, this annual meeting. Uh, I'd rather have too much food than not enough food. And we had too much. But that don't mean you cook less the next time. All God people say it. You know why? Again, I'd rather have too much than not enough. And uh, I want to say all the ladies and men that helped our God bless you. Whatever you've done, uh, thank the Lord uh, for you. And the, the choir sounded wonderful. Amen. And I'm bragging on the Lord through you. All right. Any other announcement? All right. Let's stand our feet if you will. Let me have the ushers to come around. We'll take up our morning tithes and offering. Let's bow our heads, ask the Lord's blessings on the offering. Adam Jolly, would you do that? All right, after the offering plate passes you, let's fellowship. Amen. Then I'm going to do a little bit different in the choir this morning, all right? All right, you go ahead and play. Amen. Thank you. If you'll hear me just a moment, here's what we're going to do. We normally get all the mothers in the choir on Mother's Day. So I want all the mothers that will sing in the choir and help us. I want you to come, but I want the whole choir to come this morning and all the youth. But I want the mothers to come at this time also. All right, so uh, if you don't sing in the choir and you want to... Uh, we, we, want you, we want you to come, all right? Everybody. I need all the kids in the front, all the youth in the front, all right? Son, son. Yeah, I look at that. <laughs> yeah. Remind me. You all may be seated. Amen. All right. Youth camp going back to the Oaks there. So you need to see. Uh, Brother Chris and Sister Savannah uh, concerning those, all right? If you are planning on going or uh, planning on sending your kids, if you could just like talk to us for just a second after church, um, 
If you're planning on going to youth camp, amen, need to, uh, need you to meet with Savannah and Chris, amen, after uh, the service, okay? All right. We're going to do...
This used to be in my fiddle player. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You've been a long time, ain't it? Yeah. Amen. But it's good to have her with us. We're going to help her on.
anyone like to come? We're going to sing one song, okay? Uh, one song, all right? A godly mother. Now there's a lot of people that can't say that. But I want to thank God for my mom. And uh, I want to say I appreciate her uh, raising me and training me in the fear of the Lord. Uh, I was saying I was, I was drugged, amen, when I was little. I was drugged to church, amen. Uh, we'd go to revival meetings, and I want to say for my mom, I love you, and I thank God that he's letting me keep her, uh, amen, uh, she got a diagnosis, uh, this will be third year, it'll be July, uh, be three years, uh, I had to have her whole stomach taken out uh, because of cancer, I believe the doctors are even looking now at her, and when they when she has a doctor's appointment, I think they're, I'll be honest, I think they had her dead then. But you know what? I know a God that's the great physician. And uh, I've seen her suffer, but I thank God for you. And I love you, Mama. I love you. Amen. How'd you like that? We can... She prays for her every night before she goes to bed. I thank God for these ladies. Amen. Um, all right. But I do. And I, I, here's what we're going to do. How many, how many had a praying mother? How many had a praying mother? Raise your hand if you had a praying mother. How many, how many remember hearing your mother pray? Amen. Uh, my mom called me uh, several years ago. I, I'd say it's been eight to ten years ago, and uh, I've still got it on my voicemail because uh, I had was a place I couldn't answer, and, uh, she didn't know she was leaving me a message. And she just forgot that her phone was on. Well, she was in the, can I tell on you? Uh, she she was in the bathtub. And she had reached out to call me for something. And son, you talk about the prettiest singing. I'm talking about, I'm talking about she is a worship in the Lord. And you know what? I, I'll never, free, I, hey. I've seen her shout the house down. When I say that, I've seen the Holy Spirit get a hold of my mother. Amen. And she just shouted out. Scary at first when I was a little boy. But boy, then I realized what what, what was all about. Amen. But I, lo I love a praying mother. And if you've got a praying mother, you ought to thank God for them every day. Amen. Because let me tell you, your, mo your mom's not going to always be around. And uh, you, better, you better love them and you better cherish them. Amen. And you better respect them while you have them. He's why I didn't have a godly mother. Well, you know what? You need to be a praying. If, you, if she's still not saved or uh, she's still lost, you need to pray and, uh, hey, for her salvation. Amen. Because she needs Jesus. And you live that example in front of her. Amen, church? Amen. You live that example in front of her that she'll, she'll want to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. All right. Let's sing this song. It's page one, or excuse me, page 315.
got a mom in the choir. You need to come and escort her back to her seat. Tell her you love her. Tell her how much you appreciate her. And if we've got a mother in the choir that don't have children this morning, amen, here with her, why don't you, amen, as God leads you, come and escort her, amen, back to her seat. Tell them you love them. Hug them. Yeah, just keep a playing. Amen. People have brought some little children that needs to put his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Suffer little children and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Imagine you, ladies. When you walk through those pearly gates and you're standing on the and you're standing on the streets of gold and you look out and there's children everywhere and you recognize somebody way up there and some little child Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord. comes up to grab your arm and says, Mama, I've been waiting on you a long time. Glory, glory. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Let's go see Jesus. Amen. And go right glory, to glory. glory. Amen. Glory. Amen. I'm glad there's a brighter, better day coming. Amen. Hallelujah. Feels good in the Lord's house, don't it? Amen. If you obeyed him. Let me have your Bibles, amen, with you this morning. Let's lift them up to the Lord. Give God a good wave offering. Amen. Let's give, embarrass the flesh. Isaiah chapter number 59 this morning. Isaiah 59. I'll try to be as brief as I can. I've got a, I, I'll try if, if the Lord will let me. Uh, when I say try. I always like to do a sermon uh, that's appropriate for like the holidays of Mother's Day, Father's Day, Christmas, Easter, but I've not got a Mother's Day sermon. Yes, I do because it's preached on Mother's Day, uh, but I'm not addressing, I'm addressing the whole congregation this morning, and uh, I feel like I'm going to make a mess. Now, when I say that, I don't like to give the enemy credit. But I, I tell you, the enemy's fought me over the sermon this morning, but I know this is where God's directed me. So I need your prayers, and I desire your prayers. And again, I uh, probably won't say no more. Or uh, Well, I'll say this. You probably ain't hearing nothing new, but God knows why it's on my heart, all right? So I need to, let's bow our heads, ask the Lord's blessings upon the reading of the Scripture. Heavenly Father.
for getting it all saved on back to the retirement and all God's people saying. Amen. All right. Isaiah chapter 59. Let's begin reading in verse number 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue hath muttered perverseness. None calleth for justice, nor any uh, pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They, can, uh, they conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. They hatch concretrices' eggs. And weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dieth. And that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. Skip to verse number 12. For our transgressions are multiplied before thee. And our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us. And as for our iniquities we know them. In trespassing and lying against the Lord and departing away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood, and judgment is turned away backward, and justice standeth afar off. For truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. Yea, truth falleth, or excuse me, yea, truth faileth, and ye that departeth from evil make of himself a prey, and the Lord saw it. And it displeased him that there was no judgment. You may be seated. May the good Lord add his blessing. How many is going to pray for me? I pray tonight or this morning that it would be a blessing. But you listen to what God's word, I believe, is telling us and what God has to say this morning right hurriedly. Just by introduction, amen. I believe that uh, our, our United States of America, as the preachers revolted, and by the way, thank you. How many heard the sermons yesterday? Amen. Raise your hand if you heard the sermons yesterday. Let me tell you, we need it. I asked him if he could come back this morning and preach. Amen. Amen. And I said that as a little joke, but boy, every, every church needs to hear that message. Amen. Amen. That was preached yesterday morning. I'm talking about Brother Jeff Silver's sermon. And amen, brother, amen, Richard Cole. But I believe our United States of America, amen, is like they said yesterday, we're in a mess. Amen. And we're in a crisis, amen. One by one, I believe the lights of decency, I believe the lights of hope are being blown out, amen, in the United States of America. How many want to agree with that? Amen. But let me just say this, but one day, amen, calamity will come. When I say amen that the lights are being blown out, amen, I don't like to get political and I'm not going to try to do that. But listen, there's one day we're going to call out to God and there's going to be no answer from God. And that's what burdens my heart, amen. Now listen, we're sitting around and hey, listen, I believe, amen, the Bible says the just shall live by faith. Amen. And he's got faith in the Lord. Amen, but I'm going to tell you, listen, we're, we, you, you will pray, amen, but there's coming a day you're going to pray, but your prayers won't be answered. I mean, Isaiah tells us here, Isaiah tells a sinful nation in his day that God is able to hear, amen, is able to hear your, hear your prayers, amen. But listen, our prayers are not going to be heard if we have iniquity in our heart. Listen, we got so many people, amen, saying one thing, speaking out of the both sides of their mouth. I mean, it's unreal. Amen. Listen, Isaiah. I mean, it's not that God cannot hear your prayers, but he will not hear your prayer. Amen. Because your sin has created a barrier. Amen. Between you and a holy God. Somebody said, why don't God answer my prayer? If you live right, he'll answer your prayer. If you get that sin out of your life, he'll answer your prayer. I've had people tell me before, well, preacher, when I was lost, I prayed and God answered my prayer. Let me tell you this. God says he will not hear, amen, the prayer, amen, of, the, of those that have iniquity in their heart. Hey, the only prayer he's going to answer to your prayer on is that prayer of repentance. Can I get a witness? 
God can hear your prayer. Isaiah also told us that uh, what the sin of that day was and how it parallels, amen, to the sin of today. And number one, I want you to notice the sins, amen, of a nation during Isaiah's day. In chapter 59, verse 2 through 4, the Bible says, amen, let's just read it. Look at, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Then he says, for your hands are defiled with blood. Your hands are defiled with blood. I tell you what we've got, amen, in the United States of America, we've got some bloody hands. Bloody hands, amen. Listen, America is swimming in an ocean of blood. Hey, if, you, you need to get with me this morning, amen. America is swimming in, the, in an ocean of blood, amen. I, I, I'm going to say a few things. Since the, hey, since the Roe versus Wade ruling, amen, America, amen, is killing, I don't know, I didn't get a, I didn't get a previous uh, update on how many babies, amen, that are killed every day, but it was at 4,000 a day, amen, at one time. Babies, I'm talking about, uh, amen, and then in Virginia, amen, you got this uh, uh, doctor, amen, that can deliver the baby. You need, to, you need to hear me this morning and then kill the baby. And we think, amen, judgment's not coming to America. And let me get back on Roe versus Wade. I don't like, amen, that there's leakers, amen, in the, in the highest court of the land. But I will say this, you better thank God. If it's the truth, you better thank God, amen. Listen, they, hey, those three conservative judges, amen, that Trump, I said it, didn't I? That tribe put on the court. They might not, hey, I don't know their life between them and God, but if they're the three, amen, that, that's trying to get this thing overturned, you ought to thank God. You ought to thank God. Because they're taking the heat for it. And the devil, he, he'll, he'll, he'll raise his hand. Hey, somebody, you shouldn't say that, preacher. You shouldn't say that. You've got a right to get up and leave. Somebody help me. Amen. The truth. That's what we're getting ready to preach about. See, the truth. Amen. That's what we need is the truth. And sometimes, amen, the truth. Amen. Hey, people can't take the truth. The violence of our day, I believe, is, how, is surpassed the days of Noah. I believe the violence of our days, hey, surpassed the days of Lot. The days of King Herod. Do you do you know what I'm you know what I'm reverting to? Reverting to do you know, amen, what happened, amen, in Noah's day? Do you know what happened in Lot's day? Because of the wickedness and violence, I ain't got time to go into it all. Amen. But I'm gonna tell you something. Someone said that we're living in a day. Amen. Where twelve year olds are having babies, fifteen year olds are killing each other, eighteen year olds are graduating from high school with that with a diploma they, that they can't even read. Amen. Amen. Not only that, but in verse number three, what did he say? He said that we got bloody hands with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Hey man, we're in a nation with bloody hands. We've got we've got a, in a nation of lying lips. You can't believe nothing on the news, Amen. including Fox News. Amen. Now I'm getting it all. Amen. Somebody say Amen. Amen. Hey, it's not just CNN. It's just not the View. And you people watch the View. <laughs> I don't know how in the world you watch the View. Amen. I be right with God. Amen. Now, I said it, some of you just didn't like it. Amen. And I, I, I know by the expression on your face, you didn't like it. But you know what? That's what I'm getting ready to preach about is the truth. Amen. The truth. The view don't have the truth. Amen. Well, mm, I, that didn't cost you nothing extra. Amen. Lying live. I'm talking about there's a there's an alarming decline. I'm talking about in the I'm talking about in basic honesty, if you want to call it basic, in honesty, amen, in every arena, including the government, amen, the science, amen, professional, all the realms they are, amen. We got a decline. You hear me, amen, in, in honesty in these areas. The Bible didn't say the Bible also says in verse number three, your lie, your lips have spoken lies, your tongue. 
son hath muttered perverseness. Amen. Hey, in other words, look at verse number four. He says, they hatch, or excuse me, none calleth for justice, nor any pleading for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. We're in a nation, amen, not all of blind limbs, not only, amen, of bloody hands, but we're in a nation of wicked hearts. We live in a day of moral decay. There is no morals, amen. Hey, and what burns my heart amongst churches? There is no morals, amen. Hey, we, we're told today that adultery is not no big deal. Yeah, that's, re hey, that's the reason they're going into these things and they're thinking, if it don't work, I'll just get me another. Hey, they're, it, it, we're living in a society that adultery is no big deal. Let me tell you something. Adultery is sin. Amen. Now, I thank God he can forgive you for it. I mean, thank God he can forgive you. I know we've got divorce and remade people in here. And, hey, you ought to thank God he's a merciful, righteous, gracious, holy God. But we're in a generation, amen. Hey, you listen to that adultery is no big deal. Ain't no big deal. Listen, someone, hey, let me just say this. If somebody won't keep a sacred vow before God Almighty to their spouse, then they can't be trusted to keep any promise any, in anything else. It's hurting, ain't it? We're told, amen, that, hey, we're, we're told today that private morality can be disconnected from pr public service. Uh-oh. Now, wait a minute. You know what former President Theodore Roosevelt once wrote? That honesty is an absolute prerequisite to efficient service to the public. And if a man is not honest, then he is simply disqualified for public service. You had a president that said that one time. Under the Lord. Hmm. We're told today that somehow public approval validates wrong behavior. Public approval don't validate wrong behavior. Hey, boy, you saw, well, I'll get to it in a minute, maybe. I mean, listen, we're also told that if someone is approved by society, that, it, that it's all, that's, all that, that's all that matters if they're approved by society. And let me tell you something. If you want the approval of society, you're probably, if you get their approval, you're probably a wicked individual. Amen. Not only that, what causes these conditions? I believe we've got a diet of deception going on in America. In verse number 5, what did he say? They hatch. Cockatrice, did I say that right? Your teacher helped me here. Cockatrice eggs. They hatch cockatrice eggs. Now you listen, verse number five. And weave spider webs. Now let's start with that cockatrice egg. What, what do you mean that we're, we're living in a day of deception? Amen. Hey, when you link that verse with verse number four, we find that viper's eggs, amen, are devilish, devilish lies and philosophies. Amen. They, hey, they were hatched in Isaiah's day, and I believe they're being hatched in our day. Somebody help me right there. Our world and our nation are on a snake egg diet. <laughs> Yeah, buddy, we're on a snake egg diet, amen. The incubators that hatch these eggs are materialism. Hey, hey, not only that, humanism, new ageism, liberalism. Are you with me? Socialism. Oh, preacher, you're making something mad, amen. Just get a gr gr tight grip. That old serpent who spawned and fertilized these eggs is Satan himself. Amen. He's a liar and the father of all lies. In American life today, they are poisoning our educational system, amen. our religious system, our economic, amen, our political, amen, system. Listen, our young people are going to public schools, are being served snake egg omelets every morning. God help us in public schools. It, within the span of 20 years, there was a dramatic changes took place. In 1962, the United States Supreme Court ruled that voluntary prayer in public schools was unconstitutional. 1962, 
Now, it must not have got, started really being enforced. I'm 54 years old. You can about tell what year I was born? 1968. How many in here remember, amen, when your teacher opened up a Bible story book or the Bible? How many remember that? I'm one of those guys. And then they, they, they read us a Bible story, and then they bowed their head, and they prayed. They had a public, amen, classroom prayer. Amen. And I guarantee you, if there was one that spoke up against it then, amen, that, that teacher, guess what she'd do? She'd steal, or he'd steal, amen, <laughs> prayed and read that Bible. I need your help. I said in the span in the space of about twenty years, nineteen sixty three, the Supreme Court dismantled classroom Bible reading. Nineteen eighty, the posting of the Ten Commandments in public schools was declared unconstitutional. In nineteen eighty two, the court, Amen, prohibited the teaching of bi biblical creation. In the span of twenty years, God was expelled from public schools, and we're wondering why we have to have the law there now. And they're being so disrespected, it's unreal. And hey, and they're afraid to do their job because they're afraid they're going to have to go to court. I tell you what, now you can't even whip them in school. Glory to God, now I was in school, they had a paddle. <laughs> Blistered my hide. No, they didn't. I was a good little boy. <laughs> no, I have had a paddle. Is everybody with me? Some of them had that holes drilled in them, Keith. How many remember them paddles? You're going to tell on yourself. Just that, raise your hand. You, how many's ever had a paddle in school? Raise your hand. Look at that. Boy, you are mean. Somebody. <laughs> I tell you what you was. You was young and you are rebellious. But then, amen, they could, they could lock you up. My, my wife, man, her dated. That's, she, she, I, I got to marry my high school sweetheart. How many got to marry your high school sweetheart? Raise your hand. Look at there. For, look at that. Hallelujah. Praise God. How, how young couple, how old are you? How old are you? You ain't post house lady. How old are you? Bro? 29. Amen. About to lose my train of thought. Somebody say amen. But we, be, but we hey, thank God. Y'all thank God for these young couples. Amen. Listen, a deception, I'm talking about a diet of deception. And listen, I said in a span of 20 years, now, today, what we have? We have abortion. Amen. I'm talking about infanticide, euthanasia, all become possible in a world that believes a man is not created in the image of God, but evolves from, from some something oozing out. Somebody help me there. In today's America, a teenage girl can receive abortion counseling and the abortion itself without her parents' knowledge. Somebody said, well, preacher, why is this so, why is this so uh, great, amen, that we get this uh, Roe versus Wade overturned? I heard a preacher say, amen, this week said, if a pastor don't get up and say anything about, amen, uh, Roe versus Wade this week, he needs to get out of the pulpit, amen. <laughs> amen, and you know, that just opened my eyes, amen. You ought to thank God. You say, well, what if they overturn it? Yeah, it brings it back to the states. But thank God it ain't, quote, a law of the land, it, hey, I, I tell you why, and if the state, amen, amen, takes it up and they still want to murder those babies, amen, then that state's in trouble with God. Amen. 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 School-based clinics, they, hey, dispense birth control devices, amen, counseling without parental notification or approval, prayers out, Bibles out. Values, amen, is out. The Ten Commandments are out. Creation instruction is out. Corporal punishment is out. Can I get a witness, amen? Disrespect and rebellion's in. Traditional values are out. Ed unwed motherhood is in. Abstinence is out. And condoms and abortion is in. Hey, learning is out. And social engineering is in. History's out and revolution is in. And I'm going to tell you something, amen. You that back them turning down them statues, amen, you need to be out. You need to be out. You need to get on this altar and repent, amen. amen. I don't care how young you are. Hey, that's history. Glory to God. That's the history of our country, amen. amen. 
Hey, you take the history part out of the Word of God, you ain't got much. Well, hey, well, hey, God set precedence through the old law. No, we're not under the law now. Thank God we're under grace. But that precedent was said would give us. Glory. By the way, the same Ten Commandments that's in the Old Testament is the same Ten Commandments in the New Testament. Amen. 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 Then it calls it a. Then it calls a. Look at verse number five again. There's conquer trial eggs. Then there's spider's web. <laughs> what do you mean, preacher? There's a web of wickedness weaving through our country. Spiders weaving almost invisible, sticky web. You know what that web is for? You know, it's for the purpose of catching an unsuspecting insect. Hey, man, every once in a while that'll fly into that web and become entangled by the web. That's how they catch them. Now listen, they don't see the web. Satan has a web of evil, evil, amen, that's attacking our young people. Amen. They can't hardly see those webs. Lord, what do you mean, preacher? Amen. The web of pornography. I'm scared to death when my grandkids ask for a phone. And we give them. I mean, I give them to try to monitor. We try to make sure they're watching, amen, just the, the right videos and all that. But I'm scared. I asked my daughter the other day. I said, uh, I, something was said about a tablet or a phone. And I said, is, is it right? Can she get into anything yet? Because let me tell you something. Little Destiny, she knows how to work that thing. I mean, man, they do it. Now, I, thought, I, I first thought that's a bad thing, but really it's a good thing in the society that we're living in. They're going to have to know it. Ain't that right, teacher? Amen. That, that's right. But what I'm saying, is, I, it scares me down. I said, can she get on anything? She said, no, I hope. Is that right? Are you sure of that? Because I told her, I said, one image. Did you hear me? One image that's looked at three seconds. Or less lasts a lifetime in the mind. And it can kill and destroy your children. One image. Are you listening to me, Joe? I was running that garbage route that we own. And I, I was running it one day and I had a young boy. And I'm not going to call names. I had a young boy. He is a young boy. And he was helping me throw trash that day. His daddy, I think it was summer school. Or, uh, they was off for the summer. And I happened to pull out of a driveway one day on Highway 70 down there. And all of a sudden I looked down. And there was. Now, see, you don't see these as much as you used to. But I seen a, I, I seen a dirty book. I mean, knows what a dirty book is. I seen a, a, a pornography book. Amen. I'm not going to name the names in the house of the Lord. Somebody help me. Amen. Amen. And there, there it laid, and there it laid open. Amen. With images on there. And I thought, I'm like, God pricked my heart. And I thought, boy, I hope. I think he looked down and seen it. And I think he might even reference And I thought, hey. I thought to myself, that image. You said, preacher, why? Why, why is that so important? You remember the first image you saw? You with me? Still there. I'm saved, preacher, yeah. But the old devil still pulls it up every once in a while. How many's with me? Web. The devil's weaving, weaving webs of pornography. Amen. And it's a, it's a multi-billion dollar industry. You say, why do you preach on that so much? Because, hey, I ain't naive. Some of you need to straighten up in here. I don't know who you are. God put it on my mind for some reason. Some of you need to straighten up. And glory to God. What if I come back there and ask for your phone this morning? Would you voluntarily give me your phone and let me look through your phone? And look through the history of your phone. I often wonder about, uh, I often wonder about Stephen, amen, working on these computers. Everybody with me? What's brought into him? All I can say, Stephen, he's not here, is he? It's, it's, well, what I'm going to say, amen, let me tell you something. Amen, he better be pray, stay prayed up. 
Well, glory to God. Where does all that coming from? God knows. The web of drugs and alcohol. It, hey, estimates show, amen, in later studies, amen, that students spend more on alcohol than they do on non-alcoholic drinks and books combined. And then that immor immorality. Young people today are being told that, uh, that there's no fixed standards, there's no right of right, no fixed standard of wrong, amen. You listen to me. Media and entertainment have created the myth that premarital sex extramarital sex and homosexuality lesbianism amen on the same level amen of all these other, let me tell you something they ain't on the same level but everything's okay and I under the Lord I know you hear me preaching I'm preaching it again just bear with me I'm your pastor and I'm preaching you what God said to preach this morning and if you've heard it maybe somebody else ain't heard it but I'm going to tell you something, amen, what burns my soul is every time, hey, not just about, no, but I'm telling you, the more television I watch, and I'm talking about gun smoke, and I'm talking, and I'm on my side, and the commercials that comes on, I said, did you see that one? Yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden, amen, I, hey, and even if a one, like two girls didn't kiss, they were headed toward each other like they were. Better, you better train that little girl. And that little boy, what's right and what's wicked. And when it comes on and it's wicked, you tell them they're full of the demons of hell. You're judging, preacher. I ain't judging. The Bible says you know a tree by the fruit it bears. I see a man kissing a man, they're full of the devil. I see a girl kissing a girl, they're full of the devil. And for you, amen, that don't like this preaching this morning, you're full of the devil. You want me to shut up? Why are you preaching? Because you got the devil living inside you. <laughs> amen. And you think it's all right. I hope my little grandson likes a little girl in the right time. Now say amen. I hope my little granddaughters, amen, likes a boy. Boy, we could park her a little while. Train them. Immorality. Sex education classes in public schools teach that morality is individual. That's what your sex education classes are still teaching. That a person's conception of what is morally right and wrong is up to that individual. <laughs> Let me stop right there. <laughs> you, don't, you don't ask a boy, a little boy or girl, what's right and wrong. Because they're going to take the flesh side. They never, hardly ever take the righteous end of it. Why? Because it appeals to their flesh. Appeals to their flesh. You with me this morning, church? Then there's the trashing of truth. Look at verse 12. For our transgressions, what time is it? Uh-oh. 11 minutes after. Amen. For the transgressions are multiplied before thee, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and as for our iniquities, we know them. I mean, transgression and lying against the Lord I'm not going to tie. Let's go to verse 14. And judgment is turned away backward, and justice standeth afar off, for truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. Yea, truth faileth. And he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him, displeased him and they was, that there was no judgment. Now, when we stand up and speak up, we become the bad guy. When we stand up and speak up, we're bad. We're the bad guy. Now you listen. When we make ourselves a prey, when we speak against things and call for justice and we call for truth, there's a traffic jam happens today. And it's with justice, it's with equity and truth trying to get through the streets, but they can't get through the streets. Everybody with me? Justice and judgment and equity can't come through the streets because truth has fallen. 
You got an agenda, amen, through this liberal crowd. Wake up. You've got an agenda through this liberal crowd. And this administration that's in the White House now, they got an agenda. You listen to the preacher this morning. Amen. And let me tell you something. I'll say it again. Justice and judgment and equity can't come through our streets because truth has failed. It's fallen. What caused the truth to fall, preacher? Truth is not dead. You listen. Truth is not dead, but truth has stumbled. Truth has been knocked down in America by doctors of philosophy. Yes, sir. Truth has been ripped up, amen, and tripped up in America by dishonest politicians. Amen. Dishonest politicians and liberal preachers. Amen. That's tough talk right there. Dishonest politicians and liberal preachers. You know what's wrong with our church today? Liberal preachers. That get up and preach on prosperity. Let me tell you something. God wants you to prosper. He wants everybody in here to prosper. But every once in a while, amen, you need, you, you need the devil preached out of you. Amen. amen. And I mean that in a godly way. Amen. Hey, and by the way, for you think I get up here and beat you over the head and preach against sin, let me tell you something. When I sit down and study what God gives me to preach, I get it before you do. And I have to get on my knees and say, God, have mercy on me and forgive me. But the problem is I can get up and preach it and the Lord will speak to you and you still won't do nothing about it. Mm. The job in America today is to put truth back on our feet. Angel, would you come to the piano? Appreciate that. Thank you. Preacher and pastors, amen, have the responsibility as they stand in the pulpits across America every Sunday to open the book of the Word of God. I'm talking about the book, the Bible, the Word of God, amen, and preach the truth that what saith, thus saith the Lord God Almighty. And they need to do it without fear. Some of you missed something somewhere. You're paying attention somewhere else. She just come to the piano, okay? We need to get truth back in our streets. Preachers, I'm going to say it again. Pastors have the responsibility to get up and preach what saith the word of God. And by the way, God calls the Bible the word of truth. God calls the Holy Spirit the spirit of truth. God describes himself as the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The church is called the pillar. Listen, in the ground of truth, I want to say I thank God that you're in God's house this morning. Why? Because you're in a place of truth. You're in a place of truth. Amen. Truth is what food is to your body, what light is to your eyes, and what melody is, amen, to your ears. Most of us, amen, want to stamp out those snake eggs. I need you to listen to this. Most of us want to stamp out those snake eggs that I talked about. Now, you listen. And sweep down the spider's webs. It's what I do at home. If I seen snake eggs, what I do? I'd go over and I'll stomp them things or get me something cut on. Hey, amen. Bust them things up. What I do in a, amen, a spider web at the house? Bad enough, I'll get something, a broom, something, get down them spider webs. But you got to listen to what the preacher says here. When you stamp out that snake egg and you you just get more snakes. Listen, the hatch conquers the eggs and weave the spiders well. He that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. Have you heard it? Listen to me. What are you saying? When you, we, hey, 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 you want to snap them out and you want to get them down, but when you snap out that snake egg, you get more snakes. When you sweep down that spider web, guess what? Won't be long, it'll come back. Everybody with me? We need something that'll slay the snake and destroy the spider. 
Are you in me, church? You got to destroy the snake. Hey, them eggs, yeah, you're getting a little of them. Hey, but the big one's still alive. You need to stamp out the big one. Hey, man, get the spider. Hey, listen. And by the way, only truth can keep that daddy serpent from spawning those eggs. The truth, amen, can only, hey, can, can keep the spider from weaving those sneaky webs. Listen, we need to lift up truth in America. And listen, each, every time, amen, you've got to change to stand for what's right, stand for what's right. Amen. I was talking to somebody, amen, yesterday about the, uh, about the association meeting, amen, yesterday. Let me tell you something. That association does not govern our bodies of our churches. Amen. They're there to help our churches when they need help. And I thank God for that, for that association. But what I'm trying to tell you is, I can find fault. You can find fault not to come back to the house of the Lord tonight. You can find fault, amen, not to come back to this church. But whatever fault you find, amen, if you go to another church, it's going to be the same fault there. Amen. They got the same problems and troubles there. Amen. amen. So I'm going to tell you, you're in the right place. How do you know, preacher, amen, because, amen, you're getting the truth told to you this morning. Truth hadn't fallen, amen. I hadn't failed. Truth's falling in this place this morning. I was talking to this individual said, yeah, but I don't like the way they've done this. I don't like the way they've done that, amen. Well, that's okay, amen. We're not perfect. You're not going to like everything, amen, this church does, amen. It comes to decision making. But as long as we make it, hey, as long as we stick to that book, all God people say it, as long as the church is growing, and souls are being saved. Amen. Amen. I want us to stand at our feet, every head bowed, every eye closed. In closing this morning, don't anybody let don't let anybody take the truth from you. Our hearts should break over snake eggs, spider webs, and those traffic jams, amen, that's in America today. How many, how many does this church remember when we sang, We Want America Back? How many remember that song, We Want America Back? Maybe we need to relearn that song. We want America back. This morning, if you're here and your laws are backslidden, this altar's open. Let me ask you this. Have you been feeding on snake eggs? Are you right with God? Is your family right with God? Are you wrapped up in some kind of spider's well? There's only one thing that sets you free, and that's the truth. I think Miss Candace has got a song. Amen. We're going to let her sing every head bowed, every eye closed. This altar's open. This altar's open. There are times in this life when fear is so heavy and burdens away on your mind. You Just hold on, helps right on time. My Jesus, he's always on time. And though you may see a valley, come pray for your family. Your husband, your wife, your children, your grandchildren. Maybe you see somebody else, say, man, wrapped up and have, has, has a diet of conquer tossing. Maybe, maybe they, they're stuck in some spider's well. Come on, would you? I'm so glad he sees what we don't. I've seen his children. If you're here, you're lost or you're backslidden. Don't let nothing hinder you from coming. Lord, help me. Hey, you need to cry. Somebody's in God's house this morning. And you need to pray. You need to call on God. Come now, would you? Hey, don't be ashamed of the Lord. God spoke to you. 
Hey, it's written all over you. God spoke to you. When I say that, that's between you and the Lord. I'm enjoyed the singing. I mean, enjoyed the service this morning. Appreciate everybody's been in the Lord's house and on the altar. I'd like for you to be seated just for one second, just for a minute, okay? We want to honor our our oldest mother this morning that may be in our presence. We want to church wants to honor you, the oldest mother. So here's what we're going to do: if you're age seventy and over. And that's just about, it's going over. If you're age 75 and up, 75 and older, stand, if you will. Or raise your hand if you can't stand. That'll be fine. 75. She, she can't. Okay, just raise your hand, all right? Uh, 77 and older. All right? 78 and older. 79 and older. Margaret, how young are you? 80. Anybody, anybody uh, younger than, I'm not, older than 80. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Amen for Miss Margaret. I love you, sister. Bless you. Amen. I love you. Amen. All right, now we're going to do the youngest mother that's in our attendance. Youngest mother. We're going to do... Um, 25 and younger, stand. 25 and younger, stand. 26, 27, 27. All right. Hallelujah. All right. 27. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Bless your heart. We love you. Praise God. All right. Now we're going to do. The, the mother that has the most children with them this morning. Okay? But they got to be present with you. Four, and no, four or more. Five or more. How many you got, sister? Here? Hallelujah. Seven. Amen. Praise God. You got a double portion this morning. Praise the Lord. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? Praise God for that. Well, it's, I want to say happy Mother's Day to you. Um, I wish the church could have got every mother a rose. Amen. I thought about that before and just to give you, but maybe next time you need to come next year and we'll give you something. Because <laughs> I'd love to honor every mother. Mothers are special. They're special. 
And uh, again, honor your mother. If your mother's not with you today and uh, she's still living, you should already have told her, picked up a phone. Amen. And if you had it, you, you need to pick up a phone. If, you, if she's local, you need to get to her. Amen. Amen. Because if you didn't have her with you today, amen, you'd wish she was. All right. Is all minds and hearts clear? Let's stand our feet. Amen. Remember the night service. Amen. We'll be back here at 6 o'clock. we got Levi Worley, young preacher, uh, just getting starting out. I think he's been preaching a little while, but the, the association is ordaining this young man, and we're going to give him an opportunity to stand. I, preach, I appreciate these older preachers, Brother R.J. Reynolds, Brother Harold O'Dear, uh, some of these older ones, amen, and uh, through the years, give me an opportunity to preach the gospel. Be here tonight, amen, all right. Car show form is still on the table for the food, and we still need donations concerning that, and that is May 14th, yes, ma'am. Yeah, that's this coming Saturday. That's canned drinks, okay? So please check out Leah's if you can't. Please, somebody bring something. Because the more we do. So please, the more that you help with that, the more uh, benefit it'll be to them at the end of the day, okay? Trophies have been paid for. More door prizes that we have, the better we can tell the uh, car show recipients. That's a way to let them know that we appreciate them coming. So uh, the more, you can't have too many door prizes. Camp forms, you need to see. You need to see Chris and Savannah as you leave. You plan on going to camp, okay? And if, I mean, even if you've not got your mind made up in your ten is do, do you still go to talk to them, okay? If all minds and hearts are clear, happy Mother's Day to everybody that's seen Sometimes back at the house. Sometimes the way is long and hard. Sometimes I don't feel like traveling on. Sometimes I'm pierced by Satan's darts. And sometimes I just want to go home.